Hello and welcome to Gist of GMAT. So basically you're here because you've studied for the GMAT. You probably went for a coaching institution, be it online or classroom, and you ended up somewhere between 620 to 680 marks. You probably want to reach the 700 plus mark or maybe 750 plus mark. Then you're at the correct place. So before we start, let us analyze about the nature of GMAT and what exactly it tests. Does it test your math skills, English grammar expertise, or something else? No, not exactly. It doesn't test any of these. It can be easily proved. For example, you make a maths PhD sit for the GMAT test. Do you think he or she can score a perfect 51 on the quantitative section? Not exactly, right? Remember, you are appearing for the GMAT to get admitted to the top B schools and eventually become managers and leaders in big corporates or maybe entrepreneurs. So, good English and math skills can't be the only criteria to judge your capabilities to become a good leader. GMAT basically tests your sense of logic, presence of mind, your attention to details, your sense of timing, how you cope up with the extreme pressure situations, power of elimination, last but not the least, your decision-making skill. All in all, GMAT tests your overall attitude towards life or towards a particular problem or a series of problems. The test is designed in such a manner that it actually tests all of these in a thorough way. Thus, if you fail to get a good score on the GMAT, you need to change your overall attitude towards the test unless you're very weak with the basic concepts of maths and English. Let's go deep in all the different strategies that are essential for the GMAT other than the basic concepts and formulas of basic English and maths. We will learn all these strategies with proper examples so that to apply them in the real exam environment, it will help you. Your sense of logic presents of mind. In the recent past, GMAT has switched to logic from concepts. The idea behind this is very simple. Anyone can follow a maths formula or an English grammar rule blindly once he or she understands it. But can you spot some difference when the rule doesn't apply or the rule just appears to apply? Many a times, GMAT takes you to the edge of rules and tests you whether you can work properly on the grey area or not. Let us take an example. Let's understand in the context of SE questions. Read these two questions. As a teacher, Philando cleared all the doubts of the students. Like a teacher, Philando cleared all the doubts of the students. Let's try to understand the meaning of these two sentences. It is quite clear from both the sentences that Philando cleared all the doubts of the students. But there is a slight difference in the meaning. As for the first sentence, Philander is a teacher by a profession. As for the second sentence, Philander is not a teacher, but the act of clearing the doubts was similar to a teacher. Thus, it's very important to understand the meaning or switch on your logical brain rather than just your grammatical knowledge for SE question. Let's take on more. Morkel loves to read books like Taylor. What is the meaning of this sentence? Is there anything wrong in this sentence? Let's discuss this. One thing is very much clear. Morkel loves to read books. But we should be very careful after locating the word like. And we should also be careful with the word after like. As for the sentence, the meaning is something like this. Morkel loves to read books which is similar to Taylor. As for the sentence, Taylor is a book. Thus, if Taylor is a book, the sentence is correct. But if Taylor is a person, the sentence is not conveying the correct meaning. In that case, the meaning has to be something like this. Like Taylor, Morkel loves to read books. Thus, we have to keep our logical brain open all the time. 
one comma can change the meaning drastically. We have just shown you possible errors that like can cause. There are plenty of more ways. GMAT tricks us to assume things and manipulate us to mark the wrong answer choice. Your attention to details. This is one aspect that GMAT plays so smartly that sometimes even good students fall for it. Remember, you might have done your preparation perfectly. You must have learned how to tackle a coordinate geometry question or maybe a CR assumption questions and you might be very good at the basic concepts of the same. But sometimes GMAT use certain kind of wordings that will make you ignore certain aspect of the question and eventually you will mark the wrong answer. And to add to it, you will feel a false sense of security. Let's take an example. Let's solve the next question. Please pause the video for two minutes and play when you're ready. What do you think? The argument is logical or is there any flaws in the above argument? All the motors of XGM steels have been tested by the highest testing and certifying authority of the world. But the argument doesn't talk anything about the output of the test and whether they have been given a positive certificate. They are just being tested, that's all. Thus, the argument is inconclusive. This is a small example, but in the CR section, you're gonna face these kind of traps. Be careful. Let's take one quant example. Let's solve the next question. Please pause the video for two minutes and play when you're ready. So, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the question. Let's analyze. As per our experience, the popular answers are A, B, C and D. Very few people go for E. The next is B. The most popular ones are A, C and D. Let's check the statement 1. A is equal to B into B plus 1 into B minus 1. Both A and B are integers. We have to judge whether both A is divisible by 6, whether the data is sufficient enough to give that judgment. Divisibility by 6 formula. The number has to be divisible by both 2 and 3. We can also write it as A is equal to B minus 1 into B into B plus 1. Basically, these are three consecutive numbers. Any three consecutive numbers are divisible by 3. Take any example 6, 7, 8. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 6, 7, 5, 4, 6, 7, 5, 5, 6, 7, 5, 6. And at least one of them has to be even or divisible by 2. Thus, statement 1 is enough. So the answer is A or D. B, C, E are eliminated. Now let's come to the statement 2. B minus 1 is a multiple of 3. That means A is divisible by 3 and since B, B plus 1 are consecutive numbers, one of them will be even and hence A is divisible by 2 as well. So, the statement 2 is also sufficient. Thus, the correct answer is D. What do you say, guys? Any doubts? Anything wrong with the explanation? Yes, something is wrong. Let's go back to statement 2 once again. When we are analyzing statement 2, we have to judge any statement whether one or two independent from the other one. That's the very basic rule of DS questions. What's the statement 2? B minus 1 is a multiple of 3. What's the question? Is A is divisible by 6? The answer is we cannot judge. 
because the data are given for B, the judgment should be made for A. So, it is out of scope. The correct answer is A. This is a classical trap of the GMAT. They have presented you the statement 1 and trick you to consider it while judging the statement 2. Remember the fact that when you are judging statement 2, you will have to forget what statement 1 was. That's how attention to details comes into picture. You have to be careful. DS questions are actually very easy if you don't get tricked by these classic techniques of GMAT. One of the ways to counter these tricks is to read the statement to, first for all, the DS question and then read statement 1. In that way, GMAT will not be able to set you up for their tricks. We will see more of DS trick when we will discuss DS in details. For now, let's move on.